gloves are officially off. Political analyst Barak Muluka was at an interview where he made some very interesting remarks. Listen to Muluka before we continue. As beings who are going to have conversations with serpents and do terrible things. So what is the context here? It is a rogue regime and it should be called what it is. Someone talked some years back about a, a bandit economy, but we can talk today about a gangster regime. And when you have a gangster regime, it doesn't matter that people may put on three-piece suits, live in onet and plush environments in suburbia, Nairobi and in other places, or uh, drive uh, in set of uh, the art cars, or put on watches that are worth 10 million shillings. Nobody spends 10 million and shillings on a watch. Nobody. It must be stolen resources. Nobody splurges the kinds of resources that you have seen in the papers today on a seat, on a chair for their office. So we are talking about a, a rogue regime, a kakistocracy, if we should speak like uh, scholars, a kakistocracy, government by the worst elements of society possible. Their focus is not on the welfare of the country or on the welfare of the people. They are on a splurge ego trip mission, thinking that they are leading the good life, what I have called the ten star good life. But it is a rat race to nowhere. The clergy are saying here that you are pauperizing the country. What needs to be done is to give context to this whole thing so that we understand why it is that when somebody is selling stones to farmers out there and Donkey West blended with those stones and calling it fertilizers and they are not arrested, I haven't heard of uh, anybody being brought to book. It is because the entire thing is an organic system that is just functioning the way it should be. So that is where we are and we must ask ourselves whether it's going to be possible to get out of that space or not. You see, a gangster is a gangster. Many times when we talk about gangsters, we think about some bandits in, 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 in some uh, forest uh, somewhere, in rags, in torn uh, attire, in, in, in rough linen. We don't think about people who look like what Amos Tutola would call complete gentlemen, who are in three-piece suits with extra pieces in their pockets, and uh, who uh, furnish lavish living and lifestyles. But those are bandits, they are gangsters. And so we are talking about a gangster government, a gangster regime, and that's why we are where we are. And we must call it what it is by its name. And as I have said, those of us, in whatever way and to whatever extent that may have contributed to the bringing of this bandit regime into power, all this country, an apology. Mm -hmm. Right, the all this country, an apology, it's a new moniker from the bandit economy to uh, a gangster. A a a Barak Muluka is talking of a kakistocracy, a government by the least suitable or competent citizens of a state. Those who are least qualified 
are the ones running the government. And Muluka believes that it's no longer even a bandit economy, but a gangster economy. And if you look at what has been happening in the country, then somebody might be tempted to agree 100% with Barak Muluka. We have a government selling stones to our farmers. And then the president goes pretending that Mambo ni Matatu. The mere fact that the government can sell stones to the farmers, that in itself warrant the resignation of that government. But we are still seeing the government just stamping and boasting and Kenyans are cheering it up. If you look at the individuals who have been appointed to run this government, right from the day William Ruto was appointing his cabinet secretaries, Mithika Linturi is on record saying he has over 30 court cases. That's the person, parliament, William Ruto in this government so fit to serve as the agriculture CS. Look at almost all these people who have been appointed as cabinet secretaries. Look at William Ruto himself. Look at Rigadi Gashagwa. Are these people even qualified being elected as MCS? In my honest opinion, Ruto does not qualify. Rigadi does not qualify. This government are hoping majority of individuals are not fit holding public offices. Recently, William Ruto appointed some individuals as ambassadors and consul generals. And there is one called Charles Gidinji, nominee for DRC consul general. This person was asked a very simple question during the vetting interview. What is the meaning of GDP? What's the meaning of GDP? He said that GDP equates to the country's total population. Let's have a look at the story as captured by the standard. Charles Gidinji, President William Ruto's nominee for Consul General to the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, told a vetting committee on Thursday that the gross domestic product, GDP, equates to a country's total population. His response would send the room in shocked whispers as much as it elicited reactions online. Responding to a query regarding the definition of GDP, Givinji told the National Assembly's Defense Intelligence and Foreign Relations Committee that GDP is the current population and the escalation of the population of a country. Much to the surprise of all and sundry, he added, I will go back to Foreign Affairs Academy to learn more about this job. So he does not even understand what his job as a consul general entails. He's completely green. His response deemed surprising for a consul general nominee and has caused the expectation that such appointees should have fundamental economic knowledge crucial for representing Kenyan commercial interests in Goma if confirmed. So this is a person who is completely green. He doesn't understand anything. Meet Charles Gidinji, job experience petrol station manager, highest level of education, high school, KCSE grade D, nominee for consul general to go DRC. So this is a person who never went beyond high school. He's totally green. And I just don't understand why he was picked for that kind of a position. And this is why I strongly believe that this is a kakistocracy a government by the least suitable citizens of a state. And already we have seen what is happening in the country. Ruto is trying to do things 
through trial and error. Sometimes back, William Ruto said that most of the cabinet secretaries he appointed are not aware of what is happening in their ministries. So you can see clearly that the problem is not even those individuals, but Ruto himself. He has got a very high affinity for people who are not qualified to serve in his government. He wants a yes sir individuals. People will not question him. And that's why his government is full of these quirks. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. And to any person who may want to support our forum, contact me through that number down there. Or just feel free to channel anything you can to the number. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.